Did Gerald say anything to indicate what his plans were for the rest of the evening? No, he didn't. Melanie, do you have any idea why Gerald would have a picture of you in his car? He did? Uh, no, I don't. I'm just wondering if his having your picture, and the fact that he was lingering here until he was the only customer left, has any significance. Look, I don't know anything about what happened at Maple Hill, but I guess I should tell you that Gerald and I were having an affair. He came by the coffee shop last night to break it off. Why did he do that? I was impatient because Gerald hadn't left Sally yet. So last week I gave him an ultimatum. He had to tell Sally he wanted a divorce or we were through. Gerald picked the second option. I have a new idea about who killed Gerald. Mind coming back to Maple Hill with me, Mrs. Fletcher? Of course. Chief! Jessica! You're back! Maria Olson, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Gerald Morgan. What are you talking about? It makes perfect sense. You have motive, defending your business interests against sabotage. You came back to check on the sugar house and found Gerald in the act of sabotaging your batch of sap. Chief, that is ridiculous. After Gerald broke in through the window, he must have attacked Maria when she came in, so she was forced to kill him in self-defense. I can't believe I'm hearing this! I'm not very impressed with your line of reasoning, Chief. I mean, for starters, there's your assumption that it was Gerald who broke in. How else could he have gotten inside? Maybe with the key that was found near his body, the one that Maria didn't recognize as being her own, Gerald could have borrowed one of the keys and had a duplicate made. That must be why I never caught Gerald in the act of stealing. He was using his duplicate key to get in after hours. Maria, we'd like to bring in all of your maple syrup bottles, just to make sure they haven't been tampered with. Uh, sure. We got all the evidence we need here. You know, the discovery about the key brings up a new question. Since Gerald had a duplicate key to the door and didn't have to break in, who did break in through the window? Chief, you might want to come down to the station. Some tips on this case were just called in. So what are these tips about? A few people saw a car driving very slowly near Maple Hill Sugarbush around midnight the night of the murder. They provided some partial license plate numbers. Enough to run through the system to look for potential matches? Yeah, but 
there's a slight problem. What is it, Deputy? I can't remember which of these file folders has the information. So the license plate belongs to Melanie down at the Stratton Mountain Coffee Shop. I wonder what she was doing in the neighborhood of Maple Hill at that hour. Isn't it obvious? Maybe to you, Chief, but not to me. I'd like to hear Melanie's explanation before jumping to any conclusions. Melanie, we need to have another word with you. 
About what? About the part of your story that you left out. The part that came after Gerald left your coffee shop the night that he was killed? There's nothing to tell. He just left. Then why was your car spotted in the neighborhood of Maple Hill around the time that he was killed? Okay, after Gerald walked out, I regretted what I'd done. I went outside, but I couldn't catch him. When he drove away, I got into my car and followed him. I was surprised when he headed for Maple Hill. What happened when he got there? I don't know. I was driving a ways behind him, and once I got to Maria's place, I couldn't find his car anywhere. I just gave up and went home. I think after Gerald ended things, you flew into a rage, followed him out to Maple Hill, and killed him yourself. I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Gerald Morgan. What? I could have never killed Gerald. I loved him. I think Melanie is telling the truth, Chief. I mean, why would she risk being seen following Gerald in her own car, in a small town where anyone could have recognized her, if she intended to commit murder? All right, all right, I see your point. Excuse me, I need help a customer. The $500 Gerald had came from Nature's Gift Foods. Let's go see if we can find out why. Hello again, Chief. Mrs. Fletcher, what can I do for you? Ms. Marshall, when Gerald Morgan was found dead, $500 in a money clip was found by his body. I suspect that the money may have come from you. You have no proof of that. We may, if the serial numbers on the bills can be traced back to a delivery of cash from the bank to your office. I will admit, in the course of my early career, I did some things I'm not exactly proud of to get ahead. Gerald was a charismatic fellow, and he charmed his way past my receptionist to get into my office. He found some papers of mine and threatened to turn them over to my boss. So the $500 was a payoff. If that's what you want to call it, yes. I've heard enough. Joanne Marshall, I'm placing you under arrest for the murder of Gerald Morgan. What? That's preposterous. Oh, for pity's sake, Chief. You have to stop jumping to conclusions like this. Now let's think this through. Miss Marshall, do you mind if we take another quick look around? If you must, I have nothing to hide.
Thank you.